Hey everybody, welcome back to the ST3D video. Like always, I am VJ. Today we're going to be continuing on our two-parter uh, on how to resume a failed 3D print. Let's get started. Hey guys, before we jump right into this video, I just want to mention something really quick. Great news. Uh, someone actually messaged me today on YouTube comments and said that we've actually exceeded 5,000 subscribers. 5,000. Thousand. That is crazy. I didn't think I would get there at least two, three years down the line. And because of you guys, I am where I am today with uh, the following that I have. So thank you guys so much. Now, by no means am I an expert. I do not claim to know everything. I just pass on what I know and what I've learned and what problems I ran into. So for that, thank you guys. It really, really means so much to me. You guys don't even understand how much that means to me. Uh, that what I do is of some value, usefulness to you guys. Uh, if you guys want to help me improve on the quality of my video, or if you want to help me uh, or just support me in general, I'll put some links down below, but that is at your discretion. Do as you wish. If you feel like you want to help me out, go for it. If not, there is no obligations to do so. I started this channel just to help people out. So if I can do that, that is good enough for me. So with that said, guys, let's go ahead and not waste any more time. Let's jump right on into our video today, how to resume failed 3D prints, part two. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about option two. But before we get started, I just want to let you guys know, uh, or actually, I want to apologize in advance because this is going to be a lengthy video. It's going to be kind of raw, but I didn't edit too much in here. Only reason because I wanted to be very detailed on how to resume these prints because I know a lot of people out there are throwing prints away because they do not know how to continue it or how to modify it to print other pieces to make it whole again. So with that said, uh, again, sorry for the long video, but for those of you that have a better understanding or a little bit advanced understanding of how 3D printing works, I'm gonna give you a quick summary. And for those of you that are newcomers and don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna go in full detail on what to do and how to do it. So for those of you that know what you're doing, basically what we're gonna do is lay the model down the way you printed it originally, and we're gonna auto home. So all your numbers are zero. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and raise the Z axis to come where, let's say if this is the tip of your nozzle right here, we're gonna bring it down until it touches it to where we know where the print stopped or it failed. So by doing that, we get the Z axis layer height. And that's what we're looking for is the height. Basically what we're gonna do is delete all this that are already printed and make a new STL file for these. So once you figure out what your uh, Z height was, what we're gonna do is open up a program, use whatever you feel comfortable with, either Mesh Mixer or any other programs out there. I'm gonna be using mix, Mesh Mixer today. Um, and once you figure this out, let's say if this is 200 Z height, uh, we're gonna drop the model exactly like, again, how you originally printed it. And you're gonna uh, raise the platform to, until it gets to 200, the measurement should show, and we're gonna cut it and save the top ST file separate and then just go ahead and print it in Cura or Simplify 3D. Uh, for those of you that don't have an understanding of what I just said, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Um, and I will walk you step by step on how to save your prints that have failed or how to print additional pieces and bloom and modify to make it whole again. Let's go. All right guys, so the very first thing we wanna do uh, is gonna be basically the same thing we did and step one for option one, we're going to go to prepare and we're going to auto home. Once you get this auto home, then we can continue from there. All right, guys. So once you get it auto home, what you're trying to do is basically find where the nozzle stopped. What was the Z axis height? So that's what we're going to do now. So once you're auto home, you're going to raise this to where you think the print stopped. And then from there, we're slowly going to lower the nozzle down until it's flush with where the print failed. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take a rough guess to where um, it is and just raise a Z 
until I get there and then we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, so I kind of got it to where I think is like a rough estimate of where it would be. I'm actually a little bit higher, but that's okay. The only catch here, it does not matter which X or um, Y or X axis uh, you have. That really doesn't matter. So I can move this around, we'll, we'll be okay. We're just looking for the Z height on the axis. Now, another important thing, I printed my model like this. So it doesn't matter which way I turn it, long as this is sitting down flat this way. I cannot try to find the Z axis that way, otherwise the models won't print. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay this down. If it stays, but first I guess what we can do is go ahead and move the Z axis to the center. Or sorry, the X axis, we're gonna move it to where it's in the center and it'll be a lot easier to figure it out. Okay, so once you got your X there and you've moved your Y to where you can actually, uh, actually lay the model down, go ahead and go into move axis, go to Z. But when you do it this time, if you have the CR10, go to the point one instead of the one, because now we want to be very detailed as far as finding our height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm slowly gonna go ahead and lower this down. And as I'm lowering it down, I'm just moving the model a little bit to make sure it's lining up with the edge. And there it is, it's just enough to where it's grabbing. I'm gonna see if I can go a little bit lower. Okay, so it looks like right about there is where the nozzle left off. So this is the number that we're looking for. Let me go ahead and remove that. Of course, you don't want it to smash on your print, otherwise that's not gonna work out very well. So let me go and show you where I'm at exactly. So this, is where my z-axis actually stopped at 211.2 so now that I have that information I can go ahead and move on to the next part alright guys once you figure out what the z height is which we did on the printer by measuring it uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up a program now use whatever you feel comfortable with I'm gonna go ahead and use mesh mixer here uh, what you want to do is um, go ahead and import the file that you're trying to trim so basically what we're trying to do is cut off the part that already printed uh, in this case it would be basically everything above here so all of that we need to delete and just keep the bottom pieces here okay so to do that first you need to put the model exactly how it was on the bed itself so we're going to go to edit transform and we're going to rotate this right here. And if you don't get it perfect, you can click right there and just make it an even 180. Oops. And that will lay it straight down for you. Now, once you do that, go ahead and accept that. And then what you're going to want to do from here is go ahead and cut plain or plain cut. Sorry. Uh, so that's where your zero is at right there that little red ball um, so if you notice right here when you click on the arrow you're actually at 112.5 so you're just gonna go ahead and raise it to wherever you measured um, so let's say for example that was where you measured you would leave it there so basically what this is gonna do if you notice everything's highlighted in like a shadowy color here or 
and this one up here is solid so basically this is the part that you're gonna print and this part is not gonna print um, that's our end game anyway so we need to cut this first so what you wanna do is you can uh, disregard the half which is at the bottom because this is the part that's not highlighted or you can uh, just keep both um, I would recommend doing that just for now uh, here remesh infill basically what that means is do you want when you print it, do you want like a layer on top to close everything off or do you want the infill to actually show? So you can pick whichever option you want here. So no infill, um, it's really up to your preference. Then when you hit accept here, once you do that, you notice the model goes back to normal and then you're right here, you're gonna hit separate shells. And when you do that, notice this is um, shell one, which is, the, which is the bottom part right here, which we don't need. Shell 2 is going to be this part right here, and shell 3 is going to be this part. Now, the reason why it split it into two for me is if you notice right here, there's a gap. So this isn't one solid piece. When I cut it right here, this piece was on its own, and this piece was on its own. So that's the reason I have two STL files. So what you want to do is select the one you want to import or export. Click right there. Just go ahead and hit export. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it to my desktop as 2. Click here. Do the same thing. Desktop, save it as 3. And that's it. It's already exported, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. Don't want to save. Don't save. And then from there, I'm going to open up Cura. Because that's the program I like to use. So then we're going to go ahead and click on open folder, click on to open, and there you go, guys. That is just the remaining piece that did not print. Uh, because we measured the Z height, we cut that exact height in the mesh mixture program. Now, if it doesn't give you that exact height, you can actually go up or down a little bit. It's not going to make that big of a difference because you can end up filling in the, in the gaps anyways. So this is the one of the pieces and this is the second piece right here just to show you. And then from here you can actually move it around to however you like. You can rotate it, edit it, do whatever you need. Okay. Uh, one thing I did not mention, let me go ahead and open that up. While you're in Mesh Mixer and you actually export the file, so let's say we open this one. When you hit export, um, just make sure right here, down here, when, before you save it, it says STL binary format. If it's anything else is selected, it's basically not going to save it as an STL file for you when you open it in Kira. So uh, make sure it says STL binary format. I forgot to mention that. But there you go. And once you do this, you just go ahead and hit save and um, change your settings and just go and print it out. So let me go and print this out and show you how it turned out. These are the two pieces I sliced that I just showed you and printed. Now this one just came off the printer, so I still got to clean it up a little bit, guys, but don't mind that. So this was one of the pieces here. And we're going to go ahead and put this on. That is not correct. <laughs> there we go. That's actually pretty darn close, guys. I might, of course, not might. I will have to fill in the tiny gap that's there. I can do that with super glues pretty easy. And then I can glue this piece together. And when I paint it or primer it, I should not see that seam. So let's check out the second part. Again, pretty close, but on this one, for some reason, there's a little bit more uh, of a gap here. So I'm going to have to do a little bit extra work on that part to get it going. But if this is what it's going to look like when it's done, I cannot complain. I was about to throw this away, and I decided to go ahead and try this. The second time I've tried to save an STL file, the first time did not work for me. After a little bit of research, I kind of figured out how to do it. So with that way done, uh, this actually worked out perfectly for me. All right, guys, so in this case, option two worked best for me. 
Now, for some of you, option one might work a little bit better. Now, keep in mind, if you have moved the model on your bed, it is not going to work with option one. Unless you are amazing and have crazy skills and you put it exactly where it was before the print failed. So these are your two options as far as what you can do. If you've moved the model, again, I know I'm repeating myself, use option two, which is slice it in mesh mixer or any other kind of software out there. Or option one, if your model has not moved and you have not moved the glass or anything like that, go ahead and measure exactly where you stopped Z height wise, and then go ahead and erase the, the G code before that and continue from there. Now I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking, hey, there's an option three. Yes, there is an option three, and I've tried it. I went into my slicing software and I disabled put or place print on bed flat. And I kind of rough estimated by going into the layer view. And if this is the bed, I tried to sink it under the bed, uh, the whole model. So basically I try to sink this part under the bed here, thinking that this would sit on top and it did print it but my measurements were off. So if you notice that for me did not work at all. So there's a third option guys, but I mean, there's many options actually, but the two options I'm going to go over with you today, uh, or I went over with you today is actually the ones that worked for me. Uh, option one and option two. So there you go, guys. This is how you can save your print and all the hard work that you did over the days and days of printing. And this way you don't have to check it in the trash. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, I just wanted to put this out there because I know every single personnel that's been 3D printing has in their life once, at least once, had a failed print where you had to throw it away. So let's not waste the filament. It is getting expensive out there. Uh, let's go ahead and try to resurrect our failed prints by modifying it or doing whatever we can. So I hope you found this video helpful, guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know what to do. Go ahead and leave it down below. I get back to every single one of you guys. Um, if you thought this video was helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If not, hey, you know, it is what it is. Give it a down. If you want to see more new content, go and subscribe to the channel. I put out a video once a week. And um, if you would like to see a video on something that you're having trouble with, just leave it in the comments down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can and see what I can do. So with that said, guys, like always, remember, good luck and happy printing.